Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on this video. Today I want to jump off of a topic that I presented last week. I dropped a video last week talking about people commenting about why they think preppers are crazy. Why it is that they look at it and think this is something I don't want to be part of because there's something wrong with these people that do it. If you haven't seen that video, I'll drop a link to it down in the description box below and you can go check it out. This week what I want to talk about is excuses for why people refuse to even start prepping. I've had a fair number of people comment that they're not even going to start prepping. They all have their reasons or if you want to call them excuses as to why they don't bother to get started. Some are valid reasons but maybe a little misplaced. Others are once again because there has been a perception put forward about what prepping really is and to a lot of people they don't see a need to get started because they don't feel like they can achieve it. So let's break that down and see what it is that's holding some people back. So the first reason that I get is there's a serious misconception that prepping is a destination. That you have to have a bunch of money to invest all up front and complete all of your stockpiling at one time. That you have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy crates and cases of storable food and water and all of the supplies that you're going to need to survive the apocalypse. And nothing can be further than the truth. Prepping is a gradual process. Not many people have the financial backing that you see on some of the people on some of these prepping shows that have invested hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars into their preps. Most of us don't have access to that kind of expendable cash. So we find ourselves having to do it a little bit at a time. And that is my recommendation to people. Stop thinking that prepping is a destination and look at it as a journey. You have to take small steps to get there. You can't do it all at once. And at the end of this video, we'll talk about some strategies on how to do that. But you got to stick around for that. In the meantime, let's talk about a couple more of these issues that people are expressing as to why they don't bother to even start prepping. Another common issue is people saying that they don't have a place to put their preps. Of course, when you're picturing crates and cases of goods, it's hard to look at it from a perspective of someone who's going to be able to place those items, especially if you're living in a very limited space, like let's say you're in a small apartment or a small home, or maybe you only have a single room in a home that belongs to someone else and everything you have has to go in that space. Once again, you have to think smaller. You have to think proportionally. The idea behind prepping is not to have a stockpile to survive for years. It's to get through hardships, to get through lean times. And it doesn't take much to do that. Think about available spaces that you do have, like room under a bed, in the bottom or in the top of a closet, maybe between your washer and your dryer. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies that you can store away things that you don't have to immediately access. The great thing about preps is they can go in places that you don't have to get into every day or you don't have to move them out of the way in order to do your day-to-day -day functions. There is a fine line sometimes between prepping and hoarding for some people, but in the sense of prepping, the idea is to get those supplies, to set them aside so that you know that they're there, you know where they are, and that you can get to them. And if you've got to move something out of the way to get to them during an emergency, then so be it. You just don't want to have to step around them every day. You may also find room under a staircase. If you have a staircase in your home, there may be dead space under that that will be perfect for storage. Another thing that I hear pretty often is that prepping supplies are too expensive. Now, if you are buying items that are marketed towards preppers, then yes, it is expensive. It's designed to be that way. It's a niche market and the manufacturers know that. But you don't have to buy all those specialty products. You can buy everyday items that are just as effective. Maybe not as far as dehydrated or freeze-dried storable food, but you can definitely stockpile food, water, and all the things that you need to get by without having to buy the overpriced prep market items. If you can't afford that, then stay away from it. Don't think of it as a reason why you can't prep because that's not what you have to have. You can take a can of soup or you can take a freeze-dried meal and you essentially have something that is equally as usable. Now, that can may not have a 25-year life expectancy, but once again, keep in mind, we are not necessarily storing up for the end of the world. We are storing for times when we're going to need to dip into those supplies. And as long as you're careful to rotate your stock, you should never run into a problem with that. Another thing that I see quite often is that people believe that preppers that are stockpiling food are going to deprive other people of those supplies in the event of a disaster. I will give you this, there are some, yes. There are some people that are gonna stockpile it and they're gonna defend it with their lives. But there are a lot of people out there that are stockpiling with the intent of providing for a community during a disaster. Not everybody is a food hoarder. Some people are stocking up because it's in their nature to help people during lean and hard times. 
It's not a sign of selfishness. It's a sign that you're smart and you're ready for whatever's coming. All right, so I told you that we were gonna discuss some ways to take small steps towards making your preps. So here you go. Every time you go to the grocery store, pick up just a little bit extra. A couple of extra cans of food, maybe some beans, maybe some soup, maybe some canned meats, whatever you can afford at that time. Maybe it's a lean budget day. You don't have but a couple of dollars extra. Grab things in that price range. Grab a bag of rice or a bag of dried beans. Start gathering those small items like that when you have the opportunities. Maybe you can't do it every time you go to the grocery store, but on the times that you can, grab the extra items. Take them home, put them in the bottom of the pantry, toward the back, someplace that you don't normally access, and keep in mind that that's where your stockpile goes. Try not to dip into those unless it's an absolute emergency. Remember, you're prepping for these kind of situations. If you find yourself in a situation where you urgently need those items, get them out and use them. That's what they're there for. Buy cases of bottled water or buy gallon jugs of water. It's cheap. It's super cheap. You can buy cases of bottled water for two to three dollars. And if it's on sale, you can grab even more. Take it home, shove it under the bed, keep it out of the way and know that it's there in the event of an emergency. As you finish off containers of liquids, like, like say you buy like the Arizona tea that comes in the gallon jug or something like that. Once the container is empty, clean it out thoroughly, put some water in it, and set it aside. It's not going to be safe drinking water down the line, but non-potable water is sometimes just as important as drinking water in a disaster. Having a few extra gallons of non-potable water on hand could be to your advantage, whether it's just trying to do some cleaning around the house, or if you need to flush your toilet, or if you need something to take a bath in. Having a little extra water like that on hand is never a bad thing. Watch for sales on things that you use regularly, and especially if there's buy one, get one free sales, use those kind of coupons, buy you two of them, put one of them aside, use the other one. This is common sense stuff, but every once in a while, somebody just has to say it out loud. Think small when it comes to your purchases and take advantage of every little bit of space that you can find. You don't have to stockpile 200 years worth of stuff. Grab what you can, store what you can, and use it when you need it. There is no perfect solution for every disaster that comes along. You never know what's coming your way. Prepare for whatever known possibilities you can think of that you might have to face. And then if something different happens, just find a way to adapt to that. Your brain is the best tool that you've got. Develop that, learn how to think like a survivor. Because if you don't think like a survivor, you won't be one. If you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a comment down below and tell me about it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be made aware of all upcoming videos. Also, don't forget to follow me over on TikTok. I've got other content over there. Sometimes I use some of this content. Sometimes it's content you're not going to see over here. Go check it out. But until the next one, prepare for the world that you live in, not the one you wish existed. We'll see you around.